Over 200 players have put on the Toronto Raptors jersey. And in today's video, you're going to learn about 10 of them. Players you probably didn't know ever played for the team at all. How's it going, everybody? This is Troy with the Half Court Report. Thanks for stopping by today. On this channel, we talk NBA news, players, analysis, a whole lot more. If that's the kind of thing you enjoy, I'd love if you could drop a like on this video and subscribe to this channel. And while you're at it, make sure the notifications are turned on so you never miss a video. This channel has only been active for a couple of weeks and every little bit helps. Okay, let's get into it. In 1995, the NBA did something it had never done before. It gave two cities outside of the United States an NBA franchise. Toronto and Vancouver are two of the largest metropolitan areas in Canada. And the NBA hoped they would help in expanding basketball's reach in North America and around the world. The Vancouver franchise relocated to Memphis after a few years, but the Toronto Raptors continued to grow and improve, culminating in a 2019 NBA championship. We had a great response on this channel to another Raptors video, so I thought it would be pretty cool to look at some former Toronto players that are still part of the team's history, but you might not even realize it. Number 10, Chauncey Billups. For Chauncey Billups, it was his rookie year and the third year of the Toronto franchise when he was traded there toward the end of his rookie season. The third overall pick in the 1997 draft, Billups was shipped out of Boston, a team he would later describe as a disaster. Just five days earlier, Toronto had traded disgruntled starting point guard Damon Stoudemire to Portland for a package including Kenny Anderson. When Anderson said he'd rather retire than play for the Raptors because they were in Canada, the decision was made to make Billups the new starting point guard. Billups played 29 games for the Raptors, averaging 11 points per game, but shortly after the 1998-1999 NBA lockout ended, he was traded to the Denver Nuggets for a collection of draft picks. Billups would finally find his footing in the league and go on to help lead the Detroit Pistons to the 2004 NBA championship. Number 9, Anthony Bennett. The Raptors have a history with number one picks not living up to expectations. <laughs> Andre Bargnani, anyone? <laughs> but Anthony Bennett is widely considered to be one of the biggest draft busts in NBA history. Bennett was born in Toronto, and after wearing out his welcome with the Cleveland Cavaliers and the Minnesota Timberwolves, he signed with his hometown squad in the fall of 2015. It would be his third team and his third year in the league. The Raptors were hoping they could reach Bennett in a way other teams couldn't, but his dedication to the game and inability to shed that tweener label ended his Raptors tenure after a mere 19 games. Things got so bad that Bennett himself actually requested the team send him to its G League affiliate, a first for a player who had been selected number one overall. All total, Bennett averaged 1.5 points and 1.2 rebounds for Toronto before being cut late in the season. Number 8. A lot of us remember the Brooklyn point guard Sebastian Telfair as a straight-from-high-school lotto pick, projected to be the NBA's next big thing. He was also Stefan Marbury's cousin, so the spotlight was on him from an early age. But mixtapes and magazine covers are one thing, succeeding in the NBA is a whole different story. For Bassey, an underwhelming career led him to the Raptors when he was traded there by the Phoenix Suns in 2013. In his 13 games, Telfair averaged a meager 4.3 points, 3 assists, and 1.2 rebounds a game. Number 7. Peja Stojakovic was known as one of the greatest shooters the NBA has ever seen. He played just shy of 900 NBA games, and two of those were with the Raptors. Stojakovic's cup of coffee with the Raptors began with a trade from New Orleans 11 games into the 2010-2011 season. In his two games, Peja scored a total of 20 points on 70% shooting. Fans never got to see what could have been, though, as he missed the next 26 games with a knee injury before being released to sign with the Dallas Mavericks. It was there he won the 2011 NBA Championship and retired a few months later. 
And yeah, he can still shoot. Here he is in November, nailing 11 threes in a row. Number six, Hidu Turkaloo. Turkaloo joined the Raptors as one of the NBA's hottest free agent additions for the 2009-2010 season. He was fresh off leading the Orlando Magic in scoring during the previous NBA Finals. The hope was that Turkaloo could be the missing piece that would help the Raptors return to the playoffs. But his time there was such a disaster that he's considered among many to be the most hated man to ever wear a Raptors uniform. He even showed up to training camp out of shape and failed to show effort when he did play. That was evidenced by his per 36 minute numbers that were some of the lowest of his career. Things got worse when he was fined and benched for partying at a nightclub. This came immediately after he missed a game for what he said was an illness. He later demanded a trade and told Turkish media, quote, I do not want to go back to Toronto. He got his wish that summer, ending his Raptors career after a single season. Number five, Ben Uzo. Uzo only played 16 total games for Toronto, but is one of only nine Raptor players to record a triple-double. An undrafted point guard out of the University of Tulsa, Uzo is the only player in school history to be ranked in the top 10 for points, rebounds, assists, steals, and blocks. He was signed by the Raptors late in the 2011-2012 season and got his first and only triple-double by a Raptors player in 11 years during the final game of the season. He hasn't played in the NBA since and recently made news for his personal struggles with thoracic outlet syndrome. That's the same condition that derailed the career of Markel Fultz. At number four, we have Alexander Radojevic. The Raptors drafted Radojevic with the 12th overall pick of the 1999 draft. At seven feet, three inches, he was envisioned as a solid defender to put alongside the young core of Vince Carter and Tracy McGrady, who were both in their early 20s. Radojevic's story is pretty interesting. He was set to play college ball at Ohio State, but was declared ineligible. So he ended up going to junior college in Kansas, where he played for two seasons and averaged 13 points and seven and a half rebounds a game. Hardly eye-popping numbers for an NBA prospect. The Raptors drafted him in the lottery anyway, over players like Ron Artest, Andre Karolinko, and even Manu Ginobili. Not surprisingly, Radojevic's adjustment to the league was a struggle. He played in just three games with averages around two points and two rebounds per game. During his second season with the Raptors, he was traded to Denver, then again to Milwaukee, all while never playing a game that season. He did return to the NBA a few years later and played 12 games for the Utah Jazz. Number three, Muggsy Bogues. Muggsy is most well known for when he was starring for the Charlotte Hornets as a lightning quick five foot three point guard. But the last two years of his career were spent playing two seasons for the upstart Raptors at the tail end of the 90s. He served as a backup his first year with the team, playing in 80 games, averaging 5.1 points and 3.7 assists. The next year, however, was a short stay for Bogues, as he played three scoreless games before being traded to the Knicks. Number two. In the 2006 NBA Draft, Toronto selected P.J. Tucker in the second round with a 35th pick. He was drafted out of the University of Texas from a team that included Kevin Durant and LaMarcus Aldridge. But the NBA transition wasn't smooth for the Longhorn turned Raptor. In 17 games, he averaged 1.8 points and 1.4 rebounds. Tucker would spend the next five years developing his game overseas before signing with the Phoenix Suns in the 2012 offseason. As luck would have it, Tucker was traded back to the Raptors at the 2017 trade deadline as they loaded up on assets in order to compete for a championship that year. Tucker helped the Raptors advance to the second round of the playoffs before they were swept by LeBron and the Cavs. That offseason, he was offered a reported $11 million a year to stay with the team that drafted him, but he chose to sign for less in order to play for the Houston Rockets. And number one, Sean Marion. Marion played 27 games for the Raptors during the 2008-2009 season. 
He was part of a late season trade that sent Jermaine O'Neal to the Miami Heat. The trade was done to give the Raptors a more versatile front court by playing Marion with Chris Bosch and Andrea Bargnani. Toronto went 12 and 15 with the Matrix in the lineup and ended the season 13th in the Eastern Conference. As for Marion, he averaged 14 points and eight rebounds a game. But the Bosch, Bargs, and Marion experiment ended when Marion was sent to the Dallas Mavericks in a sign-in trade during the following offseason. So what do you think? Did the name surprise you? Any other Raptors I should have included? Let me know in the comments, and if you're new to the channel, please subscribe and turn notifications on. I'm doing NBA vids like this all the time. If you're already subscribed, thanks for your support. This is Troy, and we'll catch you next time on the Half Court Report. Hey guys, one more thing. Here's some more videos to check out on the Half Court Report channel. I hope you like them, and thanks for watching.